our conversation today, but some of the things we've been talking about to this point, what we've been talking to is that we receive in today's discussion the idea of the gospel. It can be a little bit difficult, I think, the crowd has to be helped in the context of you're right, it is right. It's kind of a I do believe that. Um, so here's the thought. All of us read our Bible with God, false expectations in three forms of the And we have to be aware of that in the moment of every time we pick up our Bible. Our tendency is always going to be the approach to the text with our own lenses and our own experiences. Um, so that can make it really difficult for us to arrive together at like a definitive interpretation of a particular passage. You know, like we said, it's just a word. So I think you're telling me that it's not impossible. Yeah, and I, I think everyone does agree, though, that the reading the Bible is supposed to be transforming to us, that it's a transformational thing. So I think one key way is to kind of check yourself when you're reading, and if you're if you're just like, oh, I have no questions, I I totally get this, this is me, um, and it, it just seems like everything is perfectly smooth and you've got it, then you're probably reading some of that bias into it or some of your own preconception because... We, we have to, if we're not regularly challenged, then we're not being transformed. Right. <laughs> right. That's such a good point. I think it's easy for us to think the most important goal is that everyone is reading it on the interpretation. I think there's another goal in my mind that we have. So we have to keep that forward in mind as we engage with it. So I'm going to dive down some key things to discuss that I think are helpful. The first one is to consider our intention when we approach the Bible. So by that I mean be aware of what it is you're looking for. Because here's the reality. If you're looking for verses in the Bible that support slavery, you don't find them. On the other hand, if you're looking for verses in the Bible that support the fall of slavery, you'll find those too. But to make me um, go to the question of women, you can find verses that are oppressive to women. You can also find verses that are more women, and women are too, and intelligent. And the same thing with war and peace, like all these things that, that are kind of contradictory, depending on what you're looking for, you will find it. Which is really weird to me. Um, that feels very confusing. How come the Bible is that more clear? I don't know. Well, and the other thing is that I just want to talk about a lot of things that is the idea that the Bible is accurate and it's about all the things that it tells us to do. And so I think what you're saying is important is that sometimes we bring really questions to the text that the Bible is never being pursued to or answered. And so when we just look for that, we look for people's friends and how does it either enforce the position I have or how does it speak to this one thing. Mm-hmm. And the Bible may not have any questions to speak to that. It there somewhere between the pages. And I heard recently this idea that the Bible is answering a lot of why questions, but a lot of times we're bringing a lot of how questions. Mm-hmm. Like how do we yeah. go about this? How do we get this? But the Bible is not speaking to the how, it's speaking to the why. Why would God come in this way? And why would yeah, it it goes back to that guidebook thing. Like we're just looking for it to to give us these answers, and that that's not what it's trying to do. I think it's good to acknowledge the bad questions that you're saying. What does it say? It's not always the best question to bring to the Bible. If anyone might be what am I looking for? What am I looking for? 
I felt in the early times of Jesus to encourage the people to really do things. You can think about in Matthew when he says, look at the birth of the air. Something that we often do with air. You know, it's like seeing it all together because we're just so used to it. We just how much more we're going to have in the fathers to be real. And in the week when he just says, look at the birth of the air. And he's seeing this woman. It's just something about learning to look at something or someone with that fire. It's a huge model. I believe it's a skill we can develop, but it's it's one that, you know, we probably work on for a long time. I don't know that that's yep. that, 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 that ever been there. Because we're constantly having new experiences and new biases. So I'm not sure. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And I, I love the idea of even just asking ourselves a question before we pick up the text. Like, that's the second part of what am I looking for? Am I looking for justification for something? Or am I looking for as a college student? Dating and relationships and stuff. It was like, this is what I want to do. Can I find it in scripture? Yeah. Let me find it, yeah. So, but but ask you the question of our party before we pick up the text. What is it that I'm into? Do I have an agenda here? Is there something that I am trying to do? And to kind of give that to the Lord and then, like, open the text and allow us to be truly led by the Holy Spirit. And maybe even still following. Maybe being led towards things that we weren't looking for or weren't expecting. Yeah. yeah. You gotta be really self aware, really humble and, and open to like seeing maybe something that you weren't expecting. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah so the question, what am I looking for is better than what does it say? Yeah, if we could take that a step further, that's an even better question than what am I looking for is what good am I looking for? And what should we form that question is the life of Jesus, right? Jesus is a model, the word between his dress and his work in mind, John 1 14. He says, It's considering the life of Jesus. So, what should I be looking for looking at his life and the model he gave us? What's just to answer that question? Because the first is always one of love and liberation, and the first is in power. I read this quote, I thought it was really powerful. If you want to be violent in this world, you will always find the weapon. You want to feel, you always find the pain. Hmm. It's just interesting to just consider yeah, what am I looking for? What good am I looking for? Um, the whole thing is narrative that we and that's super helpful when um, you're reading something that you don't quite understand or you're like, I, I don't get it. Reframing it as, like, well, what is the character of God? What, who was Jesus in in a situation um, that you don't necessarily just have to find like the answer? So what am I looking for? What's the answer to this? Yeah. And it's like, look at Jesus. Like, oh, yeah, but what about this thing? Like, look at Jesus. Okay, second point. Um, we've identified this trick that isn't meant to be interpreted alone. We need each other. I read this quote that I think is so helpful to this. Um, the Bible is a land we get to know by walking through it and exploring its many paths and feelings. This land is both inviting and inspiring, but also unfamiliar, odd, and at points unsettling. I would never go exploring an unfamiliar and dangerous location alone. I don't think it's just the study of the Bible alone either. Yeah. I think it's the way it's created. It helps us with the biases that we have, the lenses that we look through, and to go and learn with other people who have a different perspective. Yeah. Well, e- even historically, like the, no one was sitting around in Bible times, like reading their scroll, you know, at their house by themselves before they started work. Like it was, it was a, a community a communal event where people came together and, and heard it really read over them. They, they weren't reading it. Um, and it, it tends to form you not only personally, but like in, in a group, um, as, 
an, an identified group of people when, when it's read that way. That's what you're going to remind me of. You're so busy. Like, not everybody could read. Not everybody had a copy of the story. So they would have to go to the synagogue and have someone read it over them. It's very much in the room. It's very much in the room. And it's, it's easy when you're reading it on your own to be like, oh, that's hard. That same, I'll just put, put it away. But when you're doing it together, then you know, like, oh, we're, we're in this together. Hey, how are, how are you doing about that, that thing that we read? Are you on, you know, what's that look like in your life? <laughs> Thank mm-hmm. you. 
the scriptures, the words, those are, that's the acting force. It's not us. We're, like, it's, it's coming on us. For me, I think the, the big takeaway has been growing up and learning how to read and study the Bible. One of the, the main things was always that you get the application. Like, wh- what, what are you going to do? What's your, your action step? Um, and sometimes I would read something and I'd be like, I, I, I don't know. I, it doesn't even seem like there's an action step. So was this a waste of time? Like, wh- what do I do with that? Um, and s- somewhere along the way, it shifted from... Um, applying what I've read to responding to what I've read. Mm -hmm. Um, Because 
so, you know, some things aren't even, don't lend themselves to an application. Like when you're reading, you know, poetry in the Bible or history, like there's not an application for that, but you can always respond mm -hmm. in some way. Um, and so that, that's really helped me to, to shift from what, what's the thing that I'm going to do, um, and said, no, this, this thing, the Bible is working on me and how am I going to respond to it? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. A response could be an act make an action step, but it also could just be being in awe of God, or it could be, you know, all kinds of things. Oh, that's really good. I think um, I, I used to have a belief that, like, you know, if you, if you study the Bible and do it well enough, um, that you can kind of figure it out. Like, you can kind of have the answers for the questions and kind of things. Um, but what I'm more and more convinced, um, one, that, that it's endless. I'll never understand it all. I can find it no matter how steep I find it. I'll never come to be my book. The Bible wants to illuminate my life. Mm -hmm. One, because I continue to walk with Jesus, and there's new things every day that the Bible is illuminating, like exposed mm -hmm. and revealing. Uh, but two, even if I were to do that, if I spent hours every day studying every line of detail, and I was doing that by myself, I still would miss it. I, mean, mm -hmm. I still would miss so much of what God wanted to show me. And so the thing that the thing that you made of just, not that it's good to study the Bible with others, but I have to confess that I can. Like if God's word is hidden away in, in others, then I can lead people to think about it differently and to approach it differently and to bring different questions to the text. Um, and I'm not going to get all that God wants to show me. It's only my questions and it's only my heart study and it's only my life. Yeah. It's so good. It's different. I don't know what you're doing. There's always another layer to the back, right? And maybe if we are on the way to the back, then you know, we just feel like, oh, I got to the end of it. Go back all the way and do something else. Well, what is the, what forces you to see further layers to feel that more than being in relationship with other people? Like, right. It's like a mirror. It constantly yeah. reveals more of ourselves. And, you know, I think that's really beautiful and worth everything at the same time. Yeah. Okay, well, how has my understanding of this truth about scripture changed my posture towards others? And I think for me, I'm more comfortable with others than the question. I used to think that to be a good Christian, to, um, to, to reflect the Bible well, I just know all the answers and have the answers for everyone when they pose a question. And really, it's just a process for someone else. You know, you need know, you know, you know, the conversation, but, but I wasn't taking that first conversation as a person who had the time to have the answer. And well, here's where you look, and this is what we do. Um, and I'm, I'm more comfortable with, with there not being an answer. Um, or if someone tells me a question, I'm just like, I don't know, I don't know what to do. And realizing that like, that's the truth, what's the truth? It's when there's some openness, you know, who are you to, um, to learn something more. And so that doesn't bother me as much as it used to. Yeah. One is that like when we understand the Bible is the scenario. We don't have to come to the same answers. If it's an answer, but why are we all coming to different answers? Yeah. But if that isn't scripture's intention to just be all the answers, but it says revealing something else, pointing us to Jesus, well then that how is it revealing something that you have pointing to Jesus? How is it revealing something you have pointing to Jesus? Also, my posture towards others is that I want to be really curious about it. And not like, why do you think that's not right? You I just think that there's a freedom to that. And I mean, the Bible has been disappointing or has let me down. It's been because I have brought the wrong questions and expectations mm -hmm. to um, The Bible has never let me down when it has been that thing that is exposing and pointing me to Jesus. Mm -hmm. like, and when we build it in the right way, what it gives and trying to build it. Mm -hmm. And when we let it down, like, man, we can do a lot of damage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so I think um, in closing, finally, just trying to be constantly aware of the tendencies that have when I approach the Bible in a healthier way with awareness. 
Well, thank you so much. Uh, thank you for tuning in.